Hello again, you join me in a cupboard under the stairs. My voice is still a bit mucked up from uh, buttons, so uh, ignore the croakiness. Anyway, I'm at a job that's been in previous videos where I've done some bits and bobs and uh, kind of done an upgrade on it. And uh, yeah, I want to sh go through something because basically a plumber in the infinite wisdom has mucked up my installation. So let me turn the camera around and show you. All right, as you can see here, we've got a gas main coming out of the floor which has been cut off. This used to go up and be attached to here with my gas bond attached merrily before the T as it should be to protect this insulation. But now this is sticking out of the concrete. This goes to other parts of the building, but now it could be a extraneous conductive part. So we could be introducing this different potential to this property. So I'm gonna carry out some tests to it, but it's just plumbers, they just sometimes decide that our oh, green and yellow cables get in the way sometimes. Anywho, I put that on temporarily when I was last here, um, when I saw it had been taken off before I could get this sorted out and bonded because I didn't have a big enough earth block there. It's also the reason why there isn't an earth label on it. The job's not quite complete. Anywho, I need to carry out a test here and see if this is introducing the potential. So we're going to be testing between the pipe work and the earthing conductor. Now the earthing conductor needs to be removed from any other conductors that are going on there. So I need to take out the MET, which means I need to isolate the installation. Now there's been a lot of talk about diverted neutral currents and I'm not claiming to be an expert at it, but it's just highlighting bits that are going on. When this operative decided to cut through this gas pipe, there was the potential that there was a diverted neutral disappearing down it in which case he could have got an electric shock because of the when he was taking and mucking about of our earths um so yeah that there, there's not really a, a safe system in place yet like a proper approved way of taking out these conductors so when i isolate this in theory there should be no issues but there could be another property with a damaged conductor which means that the if it's a PME system, it can go through there, just use my earth or use my neutral going through the shared uh, gas pipes, or water mains, or whatever it may be. So there can be some dangerous um, ampage going through it. So when I isolate it, I can put a little crocodile um, clamp meat around it and test to see if there's any current flowing. That's all I can really do. But it's just kind of highlighting the, the issues that we have because, well, especially gas uh, installers like meter installers and stuff and people that are going to angle grind a pipe off like that they don't realize the dangers that they could potentially be in but we do and we're going to try and do things properly anyway i went off on a bit of a tangent there so we're going to be testing between the two so i'll show you what i'm going to do doing there with the meter one second <laughs> so we've got our trusty mclovin and we're going to be testing between it first on low ohm and then on insulation resistance. Because if I go on low ohm and I get a reading, I know that reading's low enough that it, it wouldn't require bonding. So the value we're looking for is 22,000 ohms. If it's lower than that, then it requires bonding. Now, if it's, if it's over range on this, then we're going to go on to our insulation resistance. And then the problem with this is... My McLovin only goes to three decimal places. So on this, if it carries out a test, it will be, right, let's keep these three figures on here. It will be 0, 0.00, say, if it was dead short. But 22,000 doesn't show on here. So 0 0.02 would be 20,000. 0 0.03 would be 30,000. So you can see the issue here, it's not really precise enough. But if I got 0 0.02, then in theory, I should have to bond this piece of pipework. It's an extraneous conductive part. Okay, this is all gonna be awkward because it's one-handed, but let's just go for it. <laughs> so first things first, I'm gonna put my lead crocs together. Take any resistance out of my leads. Oh, my button's breaking on my gloving. I've uh, safely isolated this and removed my earthing conductor, which is just this little braid coming off. Hopefully you can see that on the video. I'm going to go onto our pipework. 
and we are getting 29 ohms. So it's a very low reading. If I went on to insulation resistance, the kais button's rubbish. You can see it's a dead short. Well, it was showing on it as a dead short. So there's enough of a connect, um, so it's more or less, I mean, that's a pretty damn good rod in all honesty. But you can see where there's our service cable and there's our pipe. That braid, it, it's not gonna be much resistance is there really. But this might not be right next to it. And that's the value. The value we want is if it's less than 22,000 ohms, then we're supposed to bond it. You know how many times I bang my head on this poxy thing? So the 22,000 ohm um, value comes from Ohm's law, basically. So we've got our 10 milliamps is our perceived touch voltage. So that's like the let go threshold. If we had some hold or something, we can let go at that threshold. Apparently, I've not done the science behind it. Um, so that if it's below that value, then there could be enough of a potential there for it there to be an issue for humans and livestock, I imagine, as well. But I wonder if you lick it, whether it would be uh, less as well. Or if you've got, like me, got a massive sweaty head, probably is a bit worse. But that's basically it. So if it's above that 22,000 ohm, then it, in theory, shouldn't be an issue. I'm not a bonding expert. I just know that's the value and that's what I'm looking for. So we've tested here. It's below that. So I'm going to bond it. So I may get bonded, really. and mind my bloody head. So that has now got a bond on it. I've changed the MET out and it's really mucked up the look of the, the aesthetics here because this was a, this is now like a bowstring. This one's like a bowstring because I couldn't put this sideways. And so it had to go vertical anyway. And literacy doesn't care what it looks like, but I do. Um, just need to get a tag on there as well and safety do not remove. Anyway, if we stick our crock on here. It's pretty decent. I'll probably get better. Zero. That seems about right. So now they're the same potential and there's no potential difference at all in here. And in theory, we're all safe again. So any plumbers watching, don't cut off uh, gas pipes without consulting an electrician. I'm definitely going to bang my head again. Um, and yeah, if you do come across a bit of an old gas main, just carry out this test and see what you can... Uh, see if it's below that value so if you're a plumber and thinking of chopping out old gas mains um i either chop them out completely so they're not in the installation like they're on in the floor or um yeah i don't know just don't cut our bonding cables off i suppose anyway hopefully you got something from that and uh sorry if i sound like crap but big weekend done this to me <laughs> anyway i'll catch you in the next one